So you have sent off your application, mm -hmm. backed admission at your chosen university, and now preparing for your plan for arrival. But before the fun begins, you need to transport your worldly possessions across the sea or across the land to your new world so that you can feel at home when you arrive at your new location. In my last video, I looked at how you should plan and pack your luggage so that you can travel successfully without any hitches to your new location in Canada. Some of the things that we looked at in the last video was what you can pack in your hand luggage, what you can put in your check baggage, some of the things that you are not supposed to carry along with you to Canada, some of the things that you have to give away to at least donate to people before you travel, and some of the things that are banned that you don't have to put in your luggage one way or the other to avoid being stopped at the airport. Simple, you will say, well, you may be in for a surprise. Packing slip-ups have the potential to be both costly and awkward when you are traveling. But don't panic, because in this video, I've picked seven common mistakes that you have to avoid when you start picking up your bag to pack to travel to Canada or travel to even any other destination. And literally, almost everyone has made at least one or two of these mistakes when they made a decision to travel. So join me and let's learn together so that at least you can avoid these mistakes when you decide to travel. Mistake number one is exceeding the maximum allowed weight limits. Some of you is near, but overpacking is something that is so easily done, especially if you are in a rush or a tiny bit excited. But overweight bags on an international flight can really break your bank because airlines will charge you as much as $200 to allow that extra weight to travel with you. And it doesn't matter how much weight it is, be it 1 kg, 2 kg, as long as it's below that allowed 23 weight that they give. Which means if your bag is beyond, let's say, 25 kg and you allow 23 kg, some airlines will force you to either remove that 2 kg or make a decision to allow them to move that 2 kg into a new allowable weight. So basically you are paying like $200 to allow that 2 kg to travel with you. So be sure to give yourself enough time to pack properly. Take a few minutes to work out the things that you actually need like clothes, books, sports kits, and don't be tempted to throw everything in your bag just in case. And finally, before you leave the house, be sure to weigh your bag to make sure it's within the allowable weight limit. And this is 23 kg for two bags and 12 kg for your allowable hand luggage. If you don't have a travel skill to weigh your bag with, your bathroom skill will come in handy in this case. At least that's what I did. I used my bathroom skill to weigh my bags. And when I got to the airport, it was spot on. And if your bags are too big to fit onto the bathroom scale, at least for you to see the display, to know how much weight is showing on the scale, one trick that I use that you can also use is to put maybe a bowl or some form of a, a cup or something on the scale then put your bag on it. That way you can see the display and know how much your bag weighs. Or the other trick will be to simply do mathematics. You weigh yourself to know your weight, then now you can carry the bag on your head and weigh yourself and the bag together, then subtract it out to get your weight off your bag. But sometimes if you are lucky enough to meet a very good airline agent, they might allow a kilo or two over your luggage limit. But my advice is, don't risk it because you don't want to find yourself wanting at the airport. Mistake number two is making bad use of space. There is really no need for you to fold everything with origami style precision, but it is really worth taking a certain degree of care when packing your case. Remember your baggage is going to be buffeted around the world and manhandled a lot while it's going through the airports on the conveyor belt, it's human beings that are going to move the bag around and it's going to be thrown around a lot of times. I would advise you just try looking out of the airport when they are loading your bags into the plane. And trust me, when you see this next time, you will take some degree of care when packing your bag. So be sure to pack well 
so you know your valuables are well protected. If possible, my advice is to wrap your bag with plastic to protect it from at least water or rain, especially when you are traveling in the wet season. Else you will get to your destination only to find out that your bag is wet and your clothes have gotten wet one way or the other because water has seeped through the material of the bag into the bag. This was my case when I traveled from Amsterdam to Minneapolis. We got there only to realize that it was raining. And when my bag came out of the conveyor belt, it was very wet because it was scattered through the airport on a trolley through the rain. So basically, my bag was dragged through the rain and it got me wet. And imagine what happened because I had not wrapped my bag in plastic just because I wanted to save on some few pennies here and there. Also, pack any liquids or toiletries in a waterproof container or even a plastic bag just in case there is a leak and cushion them by packing softer materials on the outside. And when it comes to your clothes, have a go by rolling them instead of folding them so it lessens the crease and create more room so you don't overfill your case and risk it busting. I picked a few tricks from Houdini Hacks in 2014 which I've been using to pack my bags. Mistake number three, packing restricted items. Check out the list of restricted items or prohibited items that the country you are traveling to doesn't allow in bags before you start packing. Unless you want to spend the very few hours of you landing in Canada with the custom officials explaining why you've packed these things in your luggage. Weapons, meat products, plants, alcohol, and rare animal products can all be problematic. And if you are carrying large amounts of medication, be sure to come along with documentation to prove that you need them or even prescription that they are needed. It is also worth bearing in mind the restriction that's being put on carrying liquids, especially in your carry-on luggage. You are supposed to carry 100 milliliters of liquid or less, unless it is medication and you have documentation to prove that you need it during your trip. Else, any form of liquid that you pack beyond this limit will be thrown away by the officials. And if it's something that you really need, it will be money that you will be throwing down the drain. So kindly do your research and know some of the items that are prohibited before you start packing them. In my last video, I shed light on a lot of these items that are prohibited. So it would be nice to go back to it and check them out so that you don't make that mistake. Mistake number four is packing unnecessary items. Unless you are going to be studying on top of a mountain in a remote location in an uninhabited area, the likelihood is that you will be able to get hold of at least the basic things that you need to survive when you get to your destination in Canada. No matter where you go to, even up in the north, if you are trying to fit enough hair products into your bag to see you through a whole year whilst in Canada, then you are just wasting valuable space. Toiletries, books, and music can all be purchased locally if you take time to at least look around where you are going to be staying. And even if they are not local, you can buy them online and they will be shipped to your home location without any stress. So it is not worth incurring extra luggage fees just to carry them over here. If you have lots of items with sentimental value that you can't throw away, and you cannot afford to at least travel with them to Canada. My advice is to find a cheap storage option or even leave it with a relative before you travel for safekeeping. And sometimes you can even ask them to cargo them to you through shipping agents. Mistake number five is not thinking ahead. When you arrive at your destination, you are going to need to shower, sleep, check in and register especially if your temporary accommodation is an Airbnb or a hotel. And you are going to have to do all this without having to unpack everything that you have just to do that. With this in mind, pack everything that you are going to need the first 24 hours that you land in one box that you can easily have access to without having to run through all your bags just to find them. And what most times I do is to make sure that 
my hand luggage is the box that I use for this. The items I'm going to need the first 24 hours of my stay in any new country. I put them in there so I can easily have access to them without having to open my check-in luggage. So when you are packing, pack with a purpose. Don't just pick and dump clothes into any bags for just any reason. Know exactly where you are putting everything else and have at least a plan so you know which bag to open when you need to. Mistake number six is being disorganized on the day. When it comes to the day of your traveling, you need to get your head around all the things that, that needs to be done right before you fly over and also the timings that you need to pay close attention to. Your check-in time, time of the flights, uh, the time that the gate closes, and all those other things. You need to know when to get to the airport so that you can make it in time before the check-in counter closes. You also need to ask yourself, can you check in online and just drop off your bag at the check-in counter later at the airport? Whatever the estimates your time of arrival at the airport is, kindly add an extra hour for it as a buffer just in case something goes wrong. Because what I always do is, my estimated time of arrival at the airport, I add an extra half hour just in case there's a hold up somewhere along the trip. The last thing you want to happen is to get to the airport late and you have to rush through the check-in, uh, the immigration check-in, the security checks and all that and be running to your boarding gates just to make it for your flight only to get to your destination and find out that your cases did not make it this was the case when i traveled to germany in the past where i got to my destination only to find out that my bags did not arrive and i had to now go shopping just to get new clothes to survive for the days before the bags arrive that's just an extra cost that could have easily been avoided if I had checked in early enough. Mistake number seven is believing that nothing could possibly go wrong. There is a saying by Murphy that everything that can go wrong always goes wrong. Airlines lose bags sometimes. It is just a fact of life and there is nothing that you can do about it. If you are arriving at a new country and everything that you need to survive in the first couple of days it's all checked into your checking bag. You can almost guarantee that it will end up taking you a couple of days just to get your checking bag, just in case there is a delay in your bags and they get messed up during transit. Or even for some reason, it got this delayed because customs needed to do extra checks and they didn't make it to your flight. So why not make an emergency ration pack in your hand luggage? Take a spare change of clothes toiletries within the restriction and essentials like adapters, chargers, papers and equipment that you will need right away when you land just to settle in and get comfortable. So even if your check-in luggage does not make it, you know you can survive the first couple of days before the bags get to you. From experience, when there's such a delay or even your bags get messed up, it can take between three days to a week for your bags to get to you. Because the funny thing is, when they get messed up, they might end up having to go through extra security checks before they send them over to you. And even if they decide to send them to you, your options are to pick it up at the airport yourself or they will courier it to you. So it goes through a process and might not get to you just right away. I hope you are all set now. Make sure you've covered all the mistakes I've listed above and make sure you pack smart and good luck with your study abroad and like i said if your dream is to study abroad do your best to make it a reality because it's something that you never regret any money or time put into studying abroad will end up yielding the needed results if you got value out of this video kindly hit the like button so that youtube will find value in this video and share it with people who also need it and kindly hit the subscribe button and join this community whilst we learn together. And do share this video with family and friends who also need it. Thank you and catch you in the next video.